The thing I love about fossils is they tell you about other worlds. So a lot of people are interested in science fiction or reading about um, imaginary worlds where there are strange people and creatures. But of course, when you are a paleontologist, you can uh, study the fossils and find out about uh, plants and animals that lived in the past. And some of them are more amazing than anything we can see living today. So for example, uh, some of the pterosaurs were bigger than any living bird. Um, and we would think this is impossible. How could they fly? And that question immediately opens a whole series of interesting scientific questions where you need to apply physics and mathematics to try to understand how this was possible. It's great to study mass extinctions um, because we know that there were times in the past when um, there were big crises on the earth and lots of living species died. Um, and now we can study these events in a great deal of detail. The um, tools that geologists have available for dating the rocks, um, the numbers of uh, uh, field sites around the world that you can visit um, uh, in every continent so that you can measure and study and look at the way climates were changing, environments were changing, and the, the, the impact on species. And then after the event, you can look at the recovery, the time when life came back and, and how long did it take, which species survive, which species recover. And actually all of this kind of information from the past is interesting in itself but it has a huge impact on our understanding of the current um, biodiversity crisis because of course we know that climates are changing we know that species are going extinct um, many people have labeled the have used these crises the impact of humans as a marker of a new geological period called the Anthropocene and this is actually a very stimulating idea because it focuses people um, to realize that what is happening now is very different um, from what was happening in the past. And the information that geologists and paleontologists can bring from studying the past can inform us a great deal about the present day. And then, of course, many people are trying to predict, you know, ordinary people, politicians, everybody wants to know um, what's going to happen to life, what is happening about climate change, can we do anything? And in fact, in some cases, the only hard evidence we may have comes from the study of the past, whether it is the last um, 20,000 years, ice ages, and the end of the ice age, or whether you look back millions of years to some of the great mass extinctions. I think it's very important for scientists to explain their research to the public. Uh, most scientists are paid by uh, government money, tax money, whether you work in a university or a museum or a research institute. And so uh, it's very important to try to uh, uh, explain the importance of the work you're doing because I think if you don't, um, then people may get uh, a wrong ideas, they may misunderstand aspects of science. We look at some other countries maybe where there are big confusions about ideas like evolution and it's very important that we keep uh, talking about what we do, explaining what we do, why do we do it, and importantly to get people thinking in a kind of critical way. So to understand that science is not like politics where people are kind of shouting at each other and may not have a great deal of evidence for what they say, but it's very important in science that we talk to kids, we talk to adults who maybe haven't studied science, and we don't just say something. We don't say, for example, the dinosaurs died out because a meteorite hit the Earth. We then go on and say, well, here is the evidence. You can look at it yourself um, and see what you think. So it can be quite a democratic process where you're kind of sharing evidence, uh, which should be public in any case, um, and then anybody who wishes to ask questions can do that and make up their own mind. And we hope it will help people, particularly children, um, to think in a critical way so that they, they look at the different points of view. Well, this is one view, here's another view. There's a lot of evidence here, there's not very much evidence here. Um, and it helps to understand that it's uh, a very uh, a critical process like that. We don't just um, say something because we, we think it's true, we have, to keep, uh, we have to keep demonstrating it, we have to keep arguing and proving the case.